Well, hello again, sixth graders. I just saw you this morning and now I'm seeing you again. Um, today's lesson is pretty brief because it's just going to go over your assignment since uh, it's a spelling writing assignment. So we're going to uh, practice some writing because uh, we haven't done that for a while since in fact indeed before the break, the first break. <laughs> um, and this time you're going to be using some spelling words because the spelling test that we're having on Wednesday won't be like a regular spelling test since you have access to all sorts of different um, books and online aids. So I need to see that you are understanding how to use the words, which you'll see in the lesson today, how we're going to do it. And it is, will all be also posted um, via RenReb, linking you to Google Classroom. But of course, we want to start off our day correctly. So let's start with our devotion. All right, Luke just today reminded me uh, in the, the text chat that we have that there are praises we can give as well. It's not all doom and gloom. And I think it was good for him to uh, remind me and then all of us for that. And I benefited the eighth graders for this too. So thanks, Luke. I appreciate that. So today from Psalm 106, verse 7, we have praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. And this is something important to remember right now. We all still have roofs over our head. We have clothes on our back. We have food that we're eating. It's not as dire as all that. Is it ideal? No, not so much. It may not be the best of times, but it is certainly not the worst of times. So let's keep that in mind and thank the one that provides us with all these good things, and that is our dear Lord and Savior. So on that note, let's praise him, both asking of him and thanking him as well. So again, with thought, students, please pray with me. Almighty God, our help and our refuge, fountain of wisdom and tower of strength, who knows that we can do nothing without your guidance and help. Assist us, we pray, and direct us to divine wisdom and power that we may accomplish today's tasks and whatever we may undertake to do faithfully and diligently according to your will so that it may be profitable to ourselves and others and to the glory of your holy name. And because you are a holy and merciful God, we beseech you to hear our prayers for the coronavirus to be eradicated and for the people who have contracted it to get better, including Parker's mom's friend and Andrew's grandparents. For our healthcare workers who work with those infected with this disease, including Gatlin's mom, Cooper's dad, Tristan's dad, and JV's mom. For people in the hospitals or nursing homes who cannot have their families visit them, for all essential workers and others who are at greater risk of exposure to COVID-19, including Jada's dad, Zuriel's dad, Kendall's dad, and JV's cousins. For our families to get along and for everyone to have the essentials they need. For those who suffer from allergies like Luke, may they be relieved of their affliction. For any experiencing pain and other afflictions like Elena's mom. For all we lift up in our hearts like Isaac Stanglin. For JC's dog who is old and near death, may she not suffer and pass peacefully. For all these things we beseech you to hear our prayers. Jesus, we also remember to give you thanks even amidst calamity. For those you have blessed with everyday essentials like Luke's family. For the safe delivery of Elias Matthew and for the ability to continue our education through this new platform. All this we pray in your name, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. All right, so again, these were prayer requests that I've added. Some of them the same, of course, I have added since we had our Zoom today on Monday. So again, because I record these ahead of time, they're not, everything's not always in the prayers right away. They're in my prayers, my husband's prayers, and our daily devotions, but not in this corporate way of prayer through the video session we're having. But please do continue to submit those via the chat during our live Zoom. And of course, you can always email, reach out to me. I love to hear from you in any way. And if I can uh, incorporate that into prayer of Thanksgiving and or request of our dear Lord, please let me know and I will be glad to do so. All right. So you know the list, you may want to refer to it uh, again, either if you have your book at home, great. If not, then through what we did last week, 
but here are all the words that you have. Uh, you may need to look them up if you don't remember or watch that video where I go over the definitions of all of them. And if you were participating in our Spelling Jeopardy, that was also a great review of what these words mean. So your task for the writing assignment, the quiz will be um, accessible to you right after our Zoom session. So tomorrow um, at, let's see, noon, because we meet at 1130, so at 12 noon exactly, you will have access to take the quiz for the spelling unit 23. Then to supplement that, because again, that's not a true test of your understanding because of the fact that you have a many aids and sources at your fingertips when you're doing this at home. I want you to do some writing. So this is a challenge to you. You need to select a minimum, minimum, not maximum, you can do more, of five words from the below spelling list to type a five plus sentence. So again, a minimum of five. You can have more sentences. A five plus sentence paragraph in the space provided below the word list. So just type it in. This will be on, on the uh, Google Classroom, just type it in here. Um, the paragraph should make sense, not be random thoughts. Just, I don't want just five sentences using spelling words. You've been doing that since like second or third grade. You guys are sixth graders, almost seventh graders, so at least most of you. <laughs> um, let's work hard. Um, so I don't want just five random sentences. I want a paragraph that is cohesive, meaning it blends, it goes together. I want it to be coherent. Remember, we've talked about coherent a lot. It makes sense. So this means you'll have to be creative and find at least five words from the below list that are related enough to make that coherent paragraph I was just mentioning. You can do this. I have great faith in you. In fact, the top six paragraphs, three from each class, will be featured in either a follow-up video or live Zoom meeting and earn Jones Jewels. So we'll try to do the three, two, one, you know, the top one getting three Jones Jewels, or maybe they'll all get three Jones Jewels, but I want good paragraphs. I know you're capable of it. And looking at this list, I can definitely see some that would be related enough. You just need five minimum of these words, there's 23 to choose from, they have to relate enough that you can make a coherent paragraph. Again, coherent, it makes sense, not just random thoughts, so that I can see that you know how to use these words and that you can put it all together. So again, it can be more than five words, but not less than five words. I would like you to either highlight the spelling word or underline it or put it in bold or somehow draw my attention to the spelling word you're using. Um, and then again, it can be a minimum of five sentences, but it should um, make sense. Keep in mind, Mrs. Jones likes what? Oh yeah, a topic sentence. So you're introducing the paragraph. You just tell me, you're gonna tell me what you're gonna tell me. Whatever the subject is about the paragraph, you decide it. So you need to do a rough draft so it makes sense and you get top marks. Second, you need to have the supporting details, the next sentences or the details. They should all be, go, be on topic with that first topic sentence. And then the last thing you need is the conclusion. No new information in the conclusion. The conclusion wraps up what you've just been talking about. In fact, a lot of times it's kind of like reiterating the first sentence, your topic sentence, but in a different new way, kind of a fun way of closing it. So that's why it may be more than five sentences. Your five sentences may be your detail sentences where you're using your spelling words. The topic sentence introduces the subject, the conclusion, the last sentence wraps it up with no new information, okay? If you want top scores, because remember, we are counting this as a grade now, um, then you wanna make sure you follow those directions. So that's why I say that it's a minimum of five plus sentences. You may be able to get five if you can somehow utilize one of your spelling words, you know, um, in the entrance and, or in the conclusion, or you can use two spellings in one sentence. But again, it has to be sensical. It has to make sense, be coherent. And um, uh, I guess I wanted to say legible like I usually do for the uh, devotional writing because you're typing it. So I know it'll be legible. All right, I think that's it. Make sure you watch this video, which of course my telling you here doesn't any good, do any good because if you're not watching it, you're still not hearing this. But I hope you're watching these 
and you can come back today's Zoom session and ask questions. So we'll answer questions about this and then uh, perhaps talk about some of the things that we weren't getting right last week with pronouns. So until then, I guess I can get out of sharing mode and say goodbye. Have a good um, week. I'm going to be seeing you one more day tomorrow. And then Friday, we do have off for Good Friday. So we can commemorate the day our Lord gave his very life for you and for me. That's how much he loves us. And then we get to celebrate, even if it's in the privacy of our homes on Sunday, the victorious celebration when our Lord rose from the dead and conquered death for us all. All right, guys. Love you tons. See you soon.